What's up, guys? It's Mikey. I am um, at a hotel uh, near Nashville. Just started working on my new album today. But um, I want to, uh, it's come to my attention that I don't show you uh, how to play my songs often enough. And uh, this one is, in case I go again, um, I think a lot of you are familiar with this one. And uh, my buddy Aaron Rodgers, uh, quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, uh, is a fan of this song. And, um, oh, that noise you're hearing is because this camera phone is hanging on the hotel fridge somehow. I Hopefully it doesn't fall. But um, Aaron Rodgers is a fan of this song, and I told him I'd get in the tabs. And I'm really uh, bad with writing out tabs, so I thought it might just be easier to show you kind of what I'm doing. Uh, hopefully that helps. So the song's in the key D, and um, basically, uh, it, when I wrote it, I, I've, I've complicated it a little bit, but the, the original format is this. It's got, uh, it's got your first finger, it's the t these two fingers, the first finger and second finger, and pretty much in the verse. And it's got this formation, it's those two notes. It's so, uh, I'm up right now, getting the whole neck in here. I'm up on the 7th, uh, ninth. I'm up on the 10th fret on the, on the, uh, on the 6th, on the, uh, sorry, the 1st string, and I ha I'm on the 11th fret on the 3rd string. So it's those two notes, the uh, the sixth and the third string, and the sixth string has the tenth fret, and the third string has the eleventh fret. So I think those two notes, and then basically the way the right hand's going to strum is is kind of a folky pattern. So. See now when I wrote it, I originally just those two notes, and I've kind of gotten used to complicating it to, to get a fuller sound out of it. So. It was originally, but now what I've done is I've I've complicated just just a touch on the second fret. We're also going to hit the tenth string, hit the tenth string. So it's these three notes now. It's the sixth, third, and second string. The second and the sixth are playing the same, tenth fret, and the third string is playing the eleventh. So um, it's going to be. So it gives a nice full D sound up there. What it's going to do is it's going to go down on the neck here to kind of it's going to mimic a F sharp uh, D over F sharp so it's going to be the same two notes the, the uh, sixth string and the third hitting those two notes both on the second fret and then it's going to jump up to the A same two notes it's going to be the uh, the six the uh, sixth string is going to be playing the fifth fret and the third string is going to be playing the sixth fret and then it's going to go to a B minor, where they're both playing the same fret. They're both playing the seventh fret. Same two notes, same third and sixth string. So when you put it together, just from there so far, you got. So simplified, the two note version is. It's going to get one hit. He's gonna get one hit and then the B minors. So let's drum again. Just one more time. And the complicated version here on the D is it's gonna be the second string and the sixth are gonna be playing the same two notes. And then with the ring with the ring finger, you're gonna plug in the eleventh uh, fret. Sorry, the um, thir third string eleventh fret, right? So it's gonna be. Now what I like to do too is I like to mute the uh, first string, so it kind of gives them fuller ring. And then basically what's going to happen here on the build up back to the D is it's going to be the G. So you're going to play third. Um, third fret's going to be on the, uh, third string's going to be on the fourth fret, and sixth string is going to be on the third fret, A, so G, A, back to D. So all in all, I'm sorry if that sounds really 
more complicated than it needs to be. A, it's really hard to sit on the floor and do this on an on an iPhone. Um, but I think if you practice it or if you rewind the video, and I'm not very good at giving lessons, but uh, here, let's try this. This might work better. This will do it better, so it'll be. Oh, I like that when I come back home, I can always find you here. And you know no matter where I go, that I'll always come back home. So keep messing around with that. And then what's going to happen is we're going to go to the uh, pre-chorus section, which is uh, simplified. It's just going to be three main chords. It's going to be G, a G chord. It's going to be a D over F sharp. So basically you're playing the, if you know your D chord, you're going to take off the top note and you're going to replace it with the bottom F sharp. So it's going to be D over F sharp, E minor, but you're going to hold, you're going to hold on the second string the uh, the uh, third fret. So you got, you got, on the E minor, you got just a regular E minor, and then with your pinky, you're going to hold on the second string the third fret. Strumming in the right right hand changes to this. That's the pre-chorus, and then we're going to do a chorus. Again, when I don't want to, and the chorus is just D, A, E minor, G, A. And I don't want to, A. And basically, it's going to hold that pinky on the uh, second string, third fret the whole time. This note. So it's going to be... And I don't want to, A, hold your line. D minor. Some things G I expect A to D makes me wonder why I try just to walk away in shame in case I cannot stay in case I go again. And this video is almost at nine minutes, and I think that might be enough for right now. The bridge is a whole other thing when it goes to the, um... If you guys want to learn that part, let me know and I'll make another video. And I apologize if this was all over the place. I hope it gave you, uh, some, uh, some insight as to how to play, uh, In Case I Go Again song. And, uh, hope you like it. Okay.